I'm Gary Katz. I'm a contributing editor to Fine Home Building and a frequent contributor to the Journal of Light Construction, the LBM Journal, and other national trade publications. I've been invited by Windsor Mill to review with you better building practices for installing exterior trim, especially installing Windsor One protected trim boards. Many builders learn the hard way through lost profits, callbacks, and job site failures that exterior trim today requires more know-how than it did even 10 years ago. We can't rely on tradition for training anymore. New building methods, the absence of old growth lumber, high-tech house wrap products, and a host of other reasons all contribute to the changing requirements necessary for installing a long-lasting, profit-protected job. To meet all those requirements, make sure that all your exterior trim installations follow the five D's. The five D's begin with good design. Always start with a good plan, a thorough design, one that includes smart details, like overhangs of at least two feet at the roof, band boards or hip roofs between floors, good drainage, both on landscaping and on patios and decks. Always include deflection in every design Every installation, the key to installing durable exterior trim is deflection. Be sure to pitch horizontal trim elements and use flashing so that water quickly runs off and away from the building. Drainage. Never trap potential moisture behind any exterior trim product. Always allow moisture to drain away quickly from the building materials, which means incorporating an appropriate capillary break to assist drying. Diffusion. Moisture will always penetrate siding and trim. There's no stopping it. So make sure your plan encourages diffusion. That's just a fancy word for drying. Air circulation helps moisture evaporate and dry, and that's what diffusion means. Without proper diffusion, and without an appropriate capillary break, moisture can also be wicked into ingrain, the most vulnerable part of any trim project. Durable exterior trim. Use a durable exterior trim product, which is factory coated to withstand the elements. Be mindful of the product's end use and its proximity to the ground and moisture. In some applications where trim is overly exposed to harsh weather and wetting, and applications that are just too close to grade, pressure treated or other exterior trim products might be preferable. However, for the majority of trim work on a typical home, Windsor One Plus trim boards, protected by a patented process that prevents damage from mold, insects, and rot, is perfect. And the protection process is safe for the user, the end user, and the environment too. When you receive your trim products, always store the material flat and in a dry location, at least 12 inches above the ground. Preferably, find a location indoors, in a garage or other covered area, but be sure the humidity inside the house is controlled and the air isn't damp. Otherwise, the material might absorb moisture and swell before installation. I'll talk more about that in a moment. If you must store trim outdoors, be sure it's thoroughly covered and elevated above the ground on sawhorses, not stacked on a pallet or a couple of 2 by 4s Use a continuous waterproof covering and elevate the tarp in the center so it sheds water off the top. Leave the bottom open for circulation, but protect it too so water doesn't splash up inside the trim bundle. Water management is critical to both long-lasting trim installation and to exterior paint and stain longevity. By water management, I mean the weather-resistant barrier, including the flashings that protect windows and doors from leaking. We'll get into other types of rigid flashing a little later, but for now remember, don't start installing trim until the house wrap is complete and all necessary window and door flashings are properly installed. Since we're on the subject of house wrap, Let's talk for just a moment about drain planes. That's what house wraps called these days. The problem is, many drain planes don't drain. Today, the drain plane is a sandwich of siding and trim pressed tightly against house wrap, which is also pressed flat against solid sheathing. For that reason, Windsor Mill recommends using rain screen technology to protect exterior trim. Rain screen walls, or drain planes that include a capillary break or an airspace between the trim and the house wrap of at least 3 16ths of an inch. 
encourage diffusion. They break surface tension and prevent capillary action from forcing water into nail holes, through cracks at butt joints, and corner boards. Using a rain screen or a drain screen type product when wrapping a home will extend the life of the trim, the siding, the paint, and your reputation as a quality builder. In arid locations like the southwest, a true rain screen wall probably isn't necessary. Two layers of house wrap will often provide plenty of protection for exterior trim, but real protection just begins with the house wrap. When it comes to installing trim properly, the first step starts right at the foundation. Get the grade right by having moisture drain away from the foundation and by maintaining siding and trim at least 8 inches above the grade or landscaping. Keep wood and engineered wood products out of the dirt, away from the ground, and off decks and roofs. That means you must maintain a minimum clearance of two inches above roofs and at least three quarters of an inch above decks and other flat surfaces. When you're installing columns, don't place them near the dirt directly on decks or on the concrete. Build a stone or masonry plant for your columns. Elevate them so that there's plenty of clearance for running or splashing water. Be sure to include drainage between the bottom of the column and a deck or patio, not only so moisture won't be trapped behind the trim, but to provide plenty of room for air circulation too. In Louisiana, I've seen columns elevated three quarters of an inch above the decking material. That's a rule to remember for high humidity areas. Always back prime any hidden cuts, cuts that you won't have access to later. Otherwise, moisture will migrate into the raw wood, your joinery will fail, the paint will fail, and the product may fail. Provide your crew members with priming kits. A plastic container with a paintbrush and a lid, fill it halfway with a professional grade exterior primer and convince your employees that the longevity of their job depends on their care as craftsmen. If they don't prime their cuts, their work will have to be removed, and so will they. Check with the Windsor One Exterior Trim Manual for the best type of primer to use in your regional area. If you're unsure which nails or screws to use, check the Windsor One Installation Manual. Like most manufacturers, Windsor Mill gets pretty specific about fasteners. Remember these important points, though. Windsor One protected trim boards are a high quality wood product. Use high quality fasteners. If you're installing trim near a large body of water, like the ocean, or in a high humidity area, or on a hillside home that's exposed to wind driven rain, don't cut corners. Use stainless steel fasteners. Don't use galvanized fasteners. They can deteriorate over time and cause streaks and stains. Ring shank splitless nails are the best choice because the points are blunt and reduce splitting. The shanks are thin too, but reinforced with ribs, which helps resist pullout. The general rule is always make sure your fasteners penetrate an inch and a quarter into solid wood framing. Never attempt to secure trim by driving nails into the sheathing alone. Nailing on fascia is especially critical. Double nail fascia at least 24 inches on center. Use standard industry practice and secure 4 to 8 inch material with two fasteners. For 10 to 12 inch material, use three fasteners across the width of the board. For other applications, stagger nail patterns, but be sure you nail at least 24 inches on center. Double nail all joints. I'll talk more about butt joints and miters in a moment. If you have to nail closer than two inches to the end of a board, be sure to pre-drill for every single nail. One quick way to cause trim failure is by overdriving nails. Nails driven too deep will draw moisture directly into the wood. The result will be premature paint failure and possible product failure. Overdriven fasteners must be remedied immediately. Fill all deep holes with an exterior grade wood filler. Smooth with 100 grit sandpaper, then spot prime before painting. Over time, the filler may need to be replaced. And it's always best to drive nails flush, so filling isn't necessary. Use a flush attachment on your nailer and check to make sure it's working properly. As a trim carpenter, I prefer to use screws. Stainless steel trim head screws are acceptable for securing exterior trim too. They can be driven flush or slightly countersunk and filled. Your trim project will last more than twice as long if you follow these fastening recommendations. 
While you're installing trim, keep in mind that flashing is the single most important type of weatherproofing we install on buildings. On all band boards and water tables, be sure to install flashing above the trim. Installing rigid horizontal flashing isn't difficult. It doesn't have to be installed before the trim. In fact, the easiest method is to install the trim right on the house wrap before installing any metal flashing. Once the trim is in place, cut through the house wrap, slip the rigid flashing in place so that it's pitched at 15 degrees, cover the uphill leg with a self-adhesive membrane, then fold the house wrap back down. Always use a strip of self-healing membrane on top of the flashing to prevent siding nails from defeating and destroying the flashing. Horizontal flashing must be applied to all rake surfaces too, and that includes bargeboard rafters on gable ends, but especially trim boards at the bottom of dormers and other roof penetrations. Some horizontal surfaces can't be flashed, like window sills. For windows and wide exterior details, install the trim at a 15 degree slope so water will deflect quickly and flow off and away from the wall. To prevent surface tension from drawing water up the bottom of slope trim, include a drip kerf that's at least 3 16 of an inch wide. Okay, now we're ready to face a red hot issue head on, butt joints versus miters. Wood moves primarily against the grain, not with the grain in this direction. Since wood moves against the grain like this and not with the grain, when you miter a board, you're cutting against the direction of the wood movement. Down here, at the short pointer heel of the miter, there's five and a half inches of wood across this piece of one by six. But up here at the long point, there's no cross grain wood. That means down here at the short point, this piece of wood will swell and shrink and move across the width of the board throughout the year. But up here at the long point, the wood won't swell or shrink at all. There is no cross grain wood. So as the heel of the miter moves, the angle of the cut changes throughout the year. As the board dries, which happens during the summer in some parts of the country and during the winter in others, the board shrinks and the short points move apart. That's what happens with interior trim when it absorbs too much moisture from the air prior to installation. When the heat comes on inside a home, all the joinery opens up. Conversely, when a board swells after installation, when it takes on moisture because of increased humidity, the long points open up. That's what happens to trim on the outside of a home. I have a few photographs I want to share with you. Once you see these pictures, you won't want to make the same mistakes. The carpenter on this home did a nice job of designing and installing the trim around the columns. But six months later, notice what happened. The miters on the columns are opening forcing apart the butt joints on the plinth wrap and ruining the miters on the torus or base cap moldings. Here's another example. See how the plinth detail on this column is mitered on the corners and the miters are opening? That's because the grain on the plinth is running perpendicular to the grain on the column. As the column absorbs moisture, it swells, but the plinth doesn't swell with it because the grain is running in the opposite direction. To avoid all these problems, be sure to follow the Windsor One exterior trim manual. Design your columns with butt joints rather than miters. Isolate your plinth detail from the column wrap by installing the plinth first on top of back out blocks. Install flashing to deflect moisture away from the interior of the column and from the trim boards too. To protect your trim boards from rough framing moisture, wrap all wood posts with house wrap and install a rain screen product. Mitering your base cap or torus molding is safe as long as you isolate those moldings from other trim elements. To further isolate and seal your trim boards, use backer rod to create industrial strength flexible cock joints, which protect end grain from wicking moisture. Wood movement is a new problem in our industry. That's why exterior trim manufacturers like Windsor Mill recommend that you use butt joints. Butt joints don't experience the same failure rate as miters. When a butt joint moves, a hairline crack appears in the paint, and that's all. The joint itself, if it's properly installed and protected by flashing and paint, will remain intact. Wood movement is the primary reason why moisture content has become a critical issue for trim carpenters. Moisture meters are a new tool in our industry, but like nail guns or lasers, every crew needs to have at least one. 
Windsor One protected trim boards are shipped from the factory with a moisture content of about 10 to 14 percent. Use a moisture meter to monitor your material once it reaches the job site. As with all natural wood products, be sure to allow your trim material to acclimate to the job site prior to installation. That means allow the material to reach the exterior equilibrium moisture content for your regional area before installation. Exterior trim will absorb moisture in wetter climates and swell. Conversely, if the job site isn't conditioned and protected properly during construction, interior trim may absorb undue moisture prior to and during installation, then shrink after installation, resulting in unacceptable joinery. Windsor Mill recommends that you never install material for exterior use if the moisture content is above 18%. Personally, I'd err on the safer side of 15% for exterior trim and 12% for interior trim if you want to protect your joinery, your reputation, and the craftsmanship on your jobs. But remember, exterior equilibrium moisture content depends on your regional area and the interior equilibrium moisture content depends on heating, cooling, and dehumidifying habits too. Detailed charts are available from the U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service Forest Products Laboratory. You know, up until about 10 years ago, where I live in Southern California, metal flashing, like you see above the trim on this window trim, and above the window too, wasn't even used on exterior window and door trim. Now there isn't a region in the country that's exempt from proper flashing. Even for basic trim designs, always flash the head of every window and door prior to installing any trim product. For simple window aprons, be sure to bevel the top of the apron at least 15 degrees, the same way you would a full-size sill. At the head, install flashing to protect the end grain of the casing legs and always flash the top of the head casing too, no matter how elaborate the trim design. For longer lasting joinery, pre-assemble exterior trim whenever possible. Pocket screws, biscuits, and tenons will increase the longevity of the joinery. Glue joints will not reach full strength unless they're pre-assembled under pressure. Seal joints completely with a waterproof type 1 or polyurethane exterior glue. Trust me, soffits aren't protected from the weather. They're exposed to moisture too. Always install house wrap on every rough framing surface before installing trim or siding, especially on soffits. House wrap will isolate the back of the trim from the moist air that builds up inside attics. House wrap will also prevent the moisture from migrating into and damaging trim material. And never install beadboard or v-groove ceiling boards tight to the perimeter walls. Always allow room for expansion. Sometimes it helps more to show what not to do. Here's what can happen if the attic moisture migrates from rough framing into a beadboard ceiling. Like a hardwood floor, beadboards made of multiple pieces and each one will swell and shrink easily as much as a 32nd of an inch across an 8 foot porch that can mean more than an inch of expansion. And don't scrimp when it comes to fastening beadboard soffits and ceilings. Toenail driven fasteners are fine, but be sure they penetrate the rough framing at least an inch and a quarter into solid wood. Plywood sheathing doesn't count and don't use staples or 18 gauge finish nails. At minimum, use 15 gauge stainless steel nails driven on 16 inch centers. Corner boards are one of the most vulnerable areas of cladding on a home. Be sure to fasten corner boards thoroughly to the framing at least every 24 inches on center. If you pre-assemble corner boards, use stainless steel screws installed in pre-drilled holes every 16 inches. Trim head screws are acceptable and they'll reduce the possibility of splitting too. Like all wood and wood products, Windsor One protected trim boards will expand and contract minimally with the grain. Regardless, be sure to build with wood movement in mind. For 16 foot runs like this one, allow an eighth of an inch gap between boards, especially if the material is dry while you're installing it. Caulk those expansion gaps. And as I said earlier, be sure to check the moisture content of your material prior to installation. 
Gauge the estimated wood movement by judging the time of year and the humidity and temperature in the region in which you're working. I hope you've learned something from this program about installing durable exterior trim. Windsor Mill is a progressive and innovative company. They realize their materials can't be installed using old-fashioned techniques. That's one reason they strongly support education in our industry, so all of us will profit from and enjoy our craft. Thanks for joining me. Windsor One protected trim boards are green from source to sales, harvested from renewable forest, milled to tight tolerance with responsible manufacturing techniques, employing the latest recycling technology that captures all waste. Windsor One protected trim boards are a responsible product and meet all Forest Stewardship Council requirements. FSC stamped material can be ordered. <laughs>